interesting case. 12-year-old kid, uh, he's starting to notice girls, girls are starting to notice him, and he's kind of self-conscious about this peg lateral. So he and his mother come in and to see me. What are you going to do about this? Well, here's what I do, and I, I've, I've done this many times. I have the assistant snap upper and lower alginate impressions. I have her pour it up in quickset stone. I then wax up exactly how I want that tooth to look. It may sound difficult, easily done with less than five minutes. I can make this tooth look good. I then have something, and I can check the opposing occlusion, so I have the occlusion exactly correct. I then show this parent and child. I get them to buy in on the way it looks. They say, oh, that looks good. I, that, that looks just fine. That's the way it should be, or something like that. Then I take that I make an impression of that. And here you can see the impression. I took an impression of that. Let me, let me step back a step here, because I, I didn't tell you the whole story. Notice this case is actually made easier than it looks. Notice this patient has diastemas. I don't know whether you can see it, but the teeth, the contacts are not real tight. I left, and you can barely see it, a slight diastema here. That's to my benefit, because I don't have to put a mylar strip in here. I can get the clear bite registration material into that area. That makes that surface nicely contoured, and I don't need to use a mylar strip. If there were tight contacts all through here, I would have to close this contact and I would have to put a mylar strip in there. But I didn't use a mylar strip. I left a slight diastema. As you see, there are slight diastemas throughout this patient's mouth. So that's not unusual. So we go ahead, we make our custom matrix. And when you make a large one like this, let's say it's covering three teeth, and I want to have adjacent teeth to help as indexes for this, which I would do is use an intraoral syringe tip to get all the embrasures around this tooth, take off or cut off the intraoral syringe tip, and build up the entire custom matrix for the other teeth. It's very difficult to build up something this large through the small opening in the intraoral tip. So I use that for the fine details. Now I fill this up with composite of the correct shade, and I use my model to see how much wax I used and where the wax was, and I contour this composite similar to that wax and to in, the, in the amount that I want. We, acid, we roughen the surface of the tooth just slightly. We acid etch that surface. We then put this back into the patient's mouth. With, by curing it from the labial, incisal, and lingual surfaces, we're able to cure this now this may be an other benefit if this was even a younger child and wouldn't sit still. The child could be moving right now and I can create unbelievable surface contours while the child moves because this is all held as a unit by the other teeth. This is, uh, we cure it from the labial incisal and lingual surfaces and this is immediately after curing. Now notice there is some flash here but again this flash is super gingival. We've been able to recreate the tooth that the patient and mother bought into before we started this procedure. I find this personally to be a great benefit by itself because every once in a while, without doing this, I've done a, what I thought was great bonding and the patient says, you know, I don't like the way that looks. So what do you do at that point? You either start backpedaling or you start adjusting. This way, I've already got the patient to buy in and the mother to buy in on what it's supposed to look like. They're not gonna, they're, it's gonna be very difficult for them to say, I don't like the way that looks. So now we have a tooth that is much easily contoured and just needs to be finished. This is a, a pre-finish uh, your polish case. We have a little bit of flash down in here. But again, because we held that with pressure, and the pressure on the gingiva kept the material from going subgingival. All this flash is super gingival, easy to remove. So here's our finished uh, composite, and the patient and mother are happy. And this is something I've done many times. It's a time-consuming, you think, because you have the assistant 
you know, take the impressions, pour it up in quick set stone, uh, then you wax it up. But a lot of that can be done between patients. And the waxing up of that tooth does not take that long once you get used to doing that. Here are some clear bite registration materials that I've used. More information is in your handout. So here are some of the materials. I've used every one of these materials. Every material is a polyvinyl siloxane bite registration material. It's not made for this technique. It's made for making bite registrations. And so they can't charge any more for this than they do for any other bite registration material because most of this material is sold as bite registration materials. I'm using like a millimeter or milliliter or two of this material to make what is called a custom matrix. And I use that custom matrix to reform my composite. So just some examples of some of the materials that are made. These are in your handout. And I don't push any one of the particular materials. They all work. I would pick one with a short working time because you don't need a long working time to take this type of impression. 